Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to another episode of our Bird Story Circle, which is now online. And um, as you know, we are doing this so that we can hear some real bird stories from people who have experienced it themselves uh, recently. So we have with us today uh, Lily or Leanne, um, and she is a new mom. Her second child is three months old now. And she's going to tell us about how her birth uh, experience has been in Delhi. So Lily, if you can first um, tell us something about yourself. Um, hi, everyone. So I'm Lily. I'm uh, 40 years old. Um, I've been uh, living in Delhi now for the past 40, 15 years. And um, yeah, I've been with my partner six years. Uh, we have a first child who's now three and a half, Onyx, and then uh, we just, um, so I just gave birth three months ago uh, to Indy. Uh, apart from that, I'm into the textile and, and fashion industry, let's say. I have a small brand of uh, fashion accessories, which I sell on, in shops in India, on my website and abroad also, which I kind of do this more part-time since my, since my first child. And yeah, I'm passionate about everything about India and its crafts and its textiles and, um, and I'm very happy to be Lovely. Thank India. you so much. And um, so maybe we can start from uh, the time you conceived for the second time. And uh, what was it like when you came to know you were having another baby? Um, what were the memories from your earlier experience that came back what was your early pregnancy like and what were you looking for this time uh, to be different if so um yeah so uh so i got pregnant let's say last year i think end of april so we wanted to have a second child uh but we wanted to take wait a bit of time uh after our first one um so Onyx was just going to turn, was two and a half, I guess. Um, uh, so we were very, very happy to be pregnant. Um, I remember my last pregnancy, the whole pregnancy was quite easy. I mean, not so much sick. The first three months, a bit of, uh, of uh, nausea, but then after that stopped and I was, you know, doing quite a bit of yoga and, and I didn't have any uh, major issues doing that but i decided to give birth in uh, in my hometown in belgium because it was over the summer and uh, so i went uh, three months before my delivery date to belgium and uh, the the, del the delivery process was for me i mean i wanted to prepare um, in belgium but i moved quite a bit so uh, i had the month where i wanted to prepare find a doula but Onyx came 21 days early, so I didn't have time to prepare as well. And actually the birth was not so easy because once I was put on that uh, bed, uh, I, it was very difficult to uh, connect with the whole process. So that's why I really wanted to make do things differently with this birth. Um, this time, a few months I had nausea and then I had a lot of, uh, I think, four, five months of, um, uh, you know, when I used to have um, something here, like I'm always, always hungry. I don't know, what's it called? I don't know, I always had a point in my stomach here, which was not comfortable for full, full months. And that was quite difficult, because, uh, but that lasted a month. And then I got uh, some kind of viral fever at five months or so, uh, that was quite intense. I was not too worried being pregnant, but uh, it took uh, you know a few weeks, a month to get over it. But thankfully, then um, towards the end of my pregnancy, we spent two months in Goa, which was something I really wanted to do to kind of be able to enjoy and relax um, before I gave birth and have two child in the house. So we did that, and I came back to Delhi to give birth kind of a month before, and that's where I met uh, with Neha. So how did you plan for this birth? How did you want it to be different in any way? Did you learn something from the previous experience that you wanted to try and do differently this time? 
Um, yes, I wanted to prepare. I mean, the first time I was more thinking of preparing physically. So I was doing yoga, which I used to do before, and I was doing it more of that. But this time I really wanted to be prepare more uh, my body, but more with my mind and body connection. And I really uh, wanted to learn about the hypnobirthing uh, and just, you know, how to understand the process, not only physically, but the whole, uh, yeah, the whole process uh, of giving birth and, uh, how do you say, enjoying it or accepting it or, you know, embracing, embracing the birth uh, and just to be, yeah, be really confident about it uh, and just to realize something natural. So it should be, it shouldn't be so difficult and scary. <laughs> Um, I remember I remember that the first time when we met and um, the, the thing that I remember very distinctly was that you said that the last time at some point in your labor you felt out of control you felt like things were being done to you and you weren't able to decide how you wanted to progress whether it was the position in which you were lying whether it was the way you were bringing the baby down. So you, that, I think that was your biggest concern. You wanted to be more in control. You of yeah. course wanted to, the birth to go as naturally as possible, but you wanted to be able to um, own the birth more. This yeah, time. and to be more aware of what's happening to me. Because that, I remember it was that once I was lying on that table, before I was, you know, there was contractions, sorry, surges, and it was overwhelming, but I could feel once I would put on the table, I couldn't feel anything. And they would tell me to push and I didn't know what to push, how to push. It was not even hurting so much. It was just my back was painful of, of being exhausted, but it was just, I was so disconnected. That's right. So I really didn't want, I want to be connected with the process. Yeah. That's wonderful. So how, how was this birth experience like? Tell us a little bit about the story. So uh, the birth experience, um, so yeah, I, I wanted, I really wanted to, I, I would just, just a few weeks, a month before I was, you know, training about the different breathing techniques to help me not be overwhelmed by the birth process, the pain or the contraction. So that's what really I focused only on that mostly. I did a couple of yoga things, but really not. And, um, and so, yeah. As for the due date, he came just a few days before. It happened in the night, same as Onyx, also on a Sunday, on a Saturday night, Sunday morning. And it was very slow uh, contractions. Then, and I actually slept over them, the beginning, which were every 20 minutes, half an hour, I think. And after three, four hours, that's when it was, they were getting a bit stronger and uh, closer together quite quickly, like, seven, eight minutes, that's when I contacted Neha to say, I think um, it's happening. I mean, it was already going to happen. Uh, and she told me, you know, try to, you told me to, to try and relax and uh, just, you know, look at what was happening. And I took a shower and it kind of made me relax more. But then after one point, it was every five minutes and it was still manageable, but I was like, I'm again going to be too late at the hospital so we left what is was 6 six thirty. so let's say it started at 12 huh, something arrived there before 7 and um, Neha was not there yet because she came from Noida and I arrived there I was supposed to do a water birth but I arrived and the water was cold but I was really just focused on breathing and managing my my contraction which was getting stronger and stronger uh, so I was in that room and then um, the strong construction started and I, I was the whole time standing uh, and really uh, holding myself each time, you know, standing and putting my hands on the bed to kind of hold myself for each contraction or on my husband. And um, yeah, uh, then the big contractions started coming. I could feel, you know, opening opening and suddenly the water broke actually i wasn't sure if the baby had popped out or <laughs> it just it was just the water broke like a big balloon burst and uh, that was really a surprise uh, but so it just 
um, uh, broke at that time. And then I think few contractions later. Um, so at that point, I climbed on the bed and I was again holding myself on my husband. And then Neha suggested to try and uh, squat. And uh, so I did that on the bed. And uh, then I lie on my husband and I was squatting and uh, the, bed, the head came out. And then it came back again, it came back inside and again. And then I think the next or second contraction, big push and the baby came out, but it was, um, it was not painful. A contraction were painful, but the whole process of the baby coming out was, uh, was quite amazing. Actually, I was, uh, I remember after the baby came out, I was for 20 minutes, couldn't believe it, uh, <laughs> what had happened. And, what I remember is also I could really feel this contraction inside of me and I could really embrace them. And even though the breathing was probably I was doing 10% of what I knew to do, but at least I could stay focused uh, and really, uh, yeah, feel these contractions and also be very, I was very confident that everything was going well and, and yeah. So I think that is the key word. You were always so confident and mm -hmm. calm and relaxed and you knew that you were going to be able to do it and which is yeah. why you labored at home through the night so well, yeah. your own environment, had showers, did whatever you needed to and you forgot to mention that when you reached the hospital, you were fully dilated, which, oh, yes. uh, which the doctor was surprised because usually women come in at an earlier stage in the labor, but you were doing fine. You coped so well. You reached fully dilated. You were ready to bring the baby out. And which is why there was no time to fill the water. And so there was no water birth that was going to happen. But I remember that when I came in and I saw you, you were so into yourself. You were so, um, it was a completely natural birth. There was nobody mm -hmm. doing anything. Everyone was just standing by, by you. And um, supporting you and your husband was beautifully holding your whole body weight. And I, it was almost like he and you together were giving birth to that baby. And it yeah. happened in, I think, like another half an hour or so. From the yeah, time yeah. It was a total of one, one, one and a half hour. Not yeah, 825 was That's the birth and I arrived at seven something. And uh, he came out and he came right onto your skin. And yes. I, I remember the way he himself latched on, like a really yeah. strong, good latch. Yeah, very started strong, sucking. sucking. And, and that was also something really I wanted to, to do to, as, at least as long as possible to come on me, you know. Uh, even though I know they would take him for a few minutes and give it back, I really wanted to him to be at least 20, 30 minutes on me, latched on one for 10, 15 minutes and then the other 10, 15 minutes. And that was really nice also because my first birth, uh, it was the breastfeeding was a bit more difficult. I, I, I think that's a great example of how when the baby is allowed time skin to skin right after birth and is initiating the latch and the breastfeeding on their own, the, mm. that significantly reduces your breastfeeding challenges afterwards. I mean, not yeah. to say that there aren't any, but the yeah. baby figured it out on his own. So he is a lot um, more confident in being able to uh, mm -hmm. breastfeed well. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So can you also tell us a little bit about your postpartum journey? What was that like the early days in the hospital and when you came back home and after? How has that been different from what you expected? Uh, yes. So the first, when I got home, the first two days, um, the first two nights, we couldn't like he would sleep wake i don't remember but he would cry a lot and we didn't know to appease him and um and after we met with you and uh, divya you just told me you know just be with him and it's not that we were not with him it's just that we thought you know we had there was a moment for him to sleep a moment to, for him to be with us but he was just a few days old and he just needed a bit more of this kind of uh, oneness, I guess, or uh, with us. And as soon as we spoke with you, then everything. No, and I fine. think basically all you needed was that reassurance. You were already, yeah, yeah. you had already figured it out. You were um, 
responding to what he needed to but you mm-hmm. were doubting whether you are doing it right or not and you just yeah. needed someone to tell you that someone to talk to and someone to tell you that what that you've got it that what you're doing is is working and yeah. they're just literally giving a mirror to you and once you yeah, yeah, yeah. figure it out then you get that confidence to carry on yeah i remember i was saying like oh yeah i know that i know that and and i just needed to go through the things with you with you uh uh but that's that's i feel um for everything with with indy with so his name is indy and and life in general is and for for me i guess my character it's like it's uh when i'm not assured or confident about something then everything uh you know kind of the baby the people feel it around around me you know and uh i think that's that's all about life <laughs> since he's 3 months he's a bit more you know buff quite buff and he's really easy i think once we had we had a bit of i think colleague for um, like two weeks when he was i don't remember a month two months that was pretty intense just to it was not it was every night just a, an hour or two maximum but this hour or two was a bit difficult but we knew we you know we were just hoping it was not going to be four weeks and weeks and then after that there's been uh, we had a week but he was very easy and then and then his teething started and so he couldn't sleep properly uh then that is over and now i mean you know i know that you know once he f- feeds well and he sleeps well he's very easy so uh, and i and he actually goes to bed quite early like 7:30 8:30 wakes up two three times in the night and wake up at 6 7 7:30 and you know he actually um it's like you know it's difficult because now i want to control the time but i shouldn't i need to to listen to him because he has his own routine and i want to make the routine because you know especially since god 19 it's and no help at home has been quite hectic yeah. and you want to organize the time but you can't and you I, and i just have to relax so what i find really interesting about the postpartum uh, period is that when we are in the middle of it we feel a bit overwhelmed oh my god my baby is in sleeping the baby is crying so much what do i do he wants to feed all the time and i remember you called me once or twice when you were in mm-hmm. that phase and then yeah. you just slow it down and let it pass and when you zoom out you say oh it wasn't that bad it was just one or two nights and so i think that's a great um, lesson for a lot of new moms that it is not hard all the time Yes there are days when it will be hard when you won't get to sleep well when your baby will cry a lot when baby wants mm-hmm. to suckle all the time or something and then you just stay with that overcome that and it goes yeah. away and then something else comes so that's i think really interesting yeah. that was great thanks so much for sharing your story i'm sure a lot of people will listen to it